I'm Greg Garbus of Four Season Tools. What we're talking about today is bracing for a stationary high tunnel. We're inside a 30 foot wide by 48 foot long stationary high tunnel that'll be heated and be used as a transplant house. All 30 foot wide structures that we sell come with eight sidewall corner braces, two in each corner. The sidewall corner brace starts at the bottom of hoop three, goes diagonally up to the middle point of hoop two, and then continues up to the, uh, the top of hoop one. When we install these sidewall corner braces, we can install the sidewall corner brace between hoop three and two before we put the hoop tops on. So what we do is we install this, we put it exactly where we want it, we make sure that we have clearances for our baseboards, and that we're not going to interfere anything with anything on the outside of the structure. We put our sidewall corner brace in between three and two. Then when we're putting up our hoop tops, we can put up hoop two first because the sidewall corner brace will help support that hoop when we put it up. Before we put up the first hoop, I like to put this sidewall corner brace and get it dry fitted. I put this brace band butting right up against the previous sidewall corner brace. I loosely tighten that, uh, that brace band bolt that allows this brace to hang. That way as soon as the end wall is up and it goes on top of the sidewall hoop for the first, the first hoop, then we can go ahead and we can pivot that up. And once the hoop top is on the first hoop, we can secure that in place. So again, the sidewall corner brace will go from the bottom of hoop three to the midpoint of the sidewall of hoop two to the top of the sidewall of hoop one. This brace has to get put in after the hoop top goes in because it lands above the seam between the sidewall hoop and the roof hoop. So that's how you install your sidewall corner braces. Next we're going to talk about our roof corner braces. Our roof corner braces do the same function as our sidewall corner braces except instead of being in the sidewall, they're in the roof. So here you can see that right above the sidewall corner brace, we have our roof corner brace. It starts above the shoulder of hoop one, goes diagonally up to the center of the roof of hoop two, and it continues all the way up to the peak of hoop three. When we install these, I like to install them at the peak of hoop three first. If you start on the edges, you might not end up in the same point on both tops, both on both sides when you get to hoop three. So what I like to do is I like to start at hoop, the top of hoop three and make sure that these are space equidistant and that you've left room for the cross connector for your ridge purling. So you start here at the peak of hoop three, you go diagonally back into the roof, the center of the roof of hoop two, and then diagonally back to above the shoulder and hoop one. Because these braces ha are flat with the ends of the same plane and the, and the rooftops are curved, when you're installing this last roof, uh, roof corner brace, it's important that that isn't pivoted up so it'll get in the way of the plastic. So a lot of time I like to tighten this bolt down, put a pair of channel locks on it, I'll twist this brace down, and I'll secure it. That, will, that way I'll ensure that my roof, the end of my roof corner brace isn't going to affect the plastic. You can also loosely tighten this, hit it with a rubber mallet, then tighten it up to get it exactly where you want it. There are eight roof corner braces, same as eight sidewall corner braces, so there's two in each corner. And that's how you install your roof corner braces. Not every stationary structure comes with roof corner braces, so it's important to understand what braces come with your structure. If you have any questions, you can always look at your packing list. The additional bracing in the fixed tunnel also includes the truss kit. So this, instead of having a truss kit, this has a single piece collar tie. So it's a 12-foot collar tie that was built when we put our hoops in. The end wall does not have that when we have a metal end wall. So this is that there's nine hoops in this structure, so there's seven single piece collar ties inside the structure. Additional to that, there's also purlins. A stationary building and a pipe skid building both have three purlins. Right here we have a roof purlin. When we installed our hoops, we measured up from the hoop seam, about 76 inches, to make sure that our roof purlins were in the same location. We marked every hoop on the ground, so we put up our roof purlin, they would, they would always be in the same spot. It's attached to the end with a one foot purlin end. It's got a flattened end and two brace bands, which is a nice strong joint between the purlin and the end wall hoop. We started on one end, started running our purlin. Aside from the first hoop and every of the middle hoops, it's attached with a two and three eighths by one and three eighths cross connector. We made sure that all the nuts were facing down. We don't want to hang anything from these. If the nuts are up, then it gives a tendency to want to hang baskets or something like that. This is a structural piece of hardware, not something to hang something from. So we always make sure that our nuts are facing down. When we put our next purlins on, we go ahead and we sleeve one purlin over the swatch end of another purlin and immediately put in a self-tapping screw. Every time you put in your purlin or your roof corner braces, your sidewall corner braces, it's important that you have your spacer boards in to ensure that you have proper six-foot hoop spacing. 
So that's one roof purlin over there. There's another roof purlin on the other side. And at the very peak of the structure, we have a ridge purlin. Again, it's attached to the first, to the end wall hoop with two brace bands and a purlin end. And then we detach it the same way and we run it the length. For this, it doesn't matter which direction the cross connectors go, but we do recommend that all the cross connector bolts are facing the same direction so that it looks nice when it's all complete. When you are installing purlins, on the far end, you will have to cut the purlins to fit on the far end of the structure. So what we do is we temporarily install the purlin end with our far end wall. Once we're putting our last purlin piece in, we hold it up to get a measurement. We mark where it needs to get cut. We cut that purlin. Then we take the purlin end off, secure the purlin end into the purlin, and then we can put that whole piece up as one assembly. We sleeve it onto the existing purlin, screw it together with a self-tapping screw, and then we put it into place with two of our brace band bolts for our purlin end. So we start with full length purlins on this end and we get to the opposite end, we cut that final purlin to length. So we've talked about our sidewall corner braces, we've talked about our roof corner braces, we've talked about uh, truss kits, in this case a single piece collar tie, and we've also talked about the three purlins, the roof purlin, the two roof purlins, and the ridge purlin. And that completes the bracing for this 30 by 48 stationary high tunnel.